Good morning, everyone, and welcome back. Appreciate you being with me this morning. Thank you so very much for the wonderful feedback uh, in regard to the series that we're looking at right now on the eschatology of the parables, and specifically on the theme now of the vindication of the martyrs. It, in Luke chapter 18, Jesus told the parable of a widow <clears throat> who was obviously being oppressed. She went to a judge and said, Avenge me on my adversary. The judge, who did not respect man or God, said, well, <laughs> you know, this woman was going to keep after it uh, if, if I don't do something, so I will avenge her. And so the Lord then says, shall God not av avenge his elect who cry out to him day and night? Verily I say unto you, he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Now, as I have suggested to you, this motif of the avenging of the blood of the martyrs goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 4, <coughs> pardon me, in which Cain killed Abel. And Yahweh said to Cain, his blood cries out to me from the dust. That concept of Yahweh hearing the blood, metaphoric, obviously, metaphoric language, and, and inherent in that is the idea that in the last days, God would avenge the blood of the saints. I've already shared with you how Jesus said in Matthew chapter 23, <clears throat> that in the judgment of Old Covenant Jerusalem that was going to happen in the first century, Jesus said, all of the blood of all the righteous from Abel onward was going to be judged and avenged in his generation. Now watch this. As I've suggested to you, this theme permeates the entire story of eschatology. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, we have the story of Israel's covenant history. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 31, the last two verses, tells us, Moses tells us, that he knew that in the last days, long after his death, Israel would fill up the measure of their sin. Now, that's a critical concept. Then, in the song itself, Moses is told twice. Now look, folks, this is so critical. Twice, God says to Moses that the song that he is giving to him involves Israel's last end, her last days. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 32, 19 and following. Deuteronomy 32, 29 and following. So this is not about the end of time. This is not about the end of the Christian age. This is about Israel's last days. When we, in our eschatology, when we go to the book of Revelation, which is most assuredly about the avenging of the blood of the martyrs, and we have a whole lot more to say about that later on, <clears throat> And, and we jerk that text, Revelation, out of the context of the avenging of the blood of the martyrs promised by God in Israel's last days, verify that in a moment, in spite of the fact that Revelation, number one, is about the avenging of the martyrs, number two, it is about the, the very same martyrs that Jesus talked about in Matthew chapter 23, when we rip Revelation out of that context, we are misusing Scripture. We are creating, basically, a new eschatology. Watch this. So here we have the Song of Moses, Deuteronomy chapter 32. It is about Israel's last days, her last end. And what does God say? Rejoice over her... For God has avenged you. Now remember, he's extrapolating himself. He is pro 
protracting and projecting himself into Israel's last days and saying that in Israel's last days, God will avenge the blood of his martyrs, of his saints. Wow! Remember what Jesus said in Luke chapter 18? Well, watch this. Jesus was living in the last days. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. He appeared in the last days. And by the way, he said he was living in the days foretold by the old covenant prophets. Hebrews, excuse me, Matthew 13, verse 17. So we have Jesus living in the very, fore, very time foretold by Deuteronomy 32. In Deuteronomy 32, it said God would avenge the blood of his martyrs. And here's Jesus saying that all of the blood of all the martyrs all the way back to Abel would be vindicated and judged in the coming judgment of Jerusalem in AD 70. This fits perfectly with, with what Jesus said in Luke chapter 18, verse 8. He will avenge them, who? The martyrs, speedily. And we'll have more to say about that word, speedily, in an upcoming lesson. All right? Look, folks, the avenging of the blood of the martyrs appears everywhere. Here it is in Deuteronomy 32, belonging to Israel's last days, and Jesus promising the very thing that Deuteronomy 32 foretold in his generation, predicting it to come quickly. <clears throat> when we correlate that promise with the rest of the New Testament predictions of the imminent coming of the Lord and vindication of the martyrs, my goodness, it changes our entire vision of eschatology and it destroys all futurism. Look, you need to get a copy of my book, We Shall Meet Him in the Air, The Wedding of the King of Kings. I have an extensive discussion of the vindication of the martyrs. Go to my website, eschatology.org, bibleprophecy.com. Order the book. Mention that you saw the offer on YouTube or Facebook. <clears throat> Pardon me. And I'll refund your shipping. And I will include a free copy of the presentation that I gave at Criswell College in Dallas in 2012. This is on the preterist view of the millennium in which I deal with the story of the vindication of the martyrs all the way from Abel to the end of the millennium. This lesson alone will blow you away. Well, thanks so much for joining me for this morning's morning musing. I hope you can see the power of Jesus' parabolic teaching on the vindication of the martyrs. And boy, do we have more. So we'll see you on the flip side.